Fan vad kul. Ja, skoj. What's up everyone and welcome to Coffee with Ola. Today I'm extremely excited to have Buster Odeholm of so many bands. Humanity's Last Breath, Vildhjärta and also what I found out last week, Throne. Yes. Which is an incredible band. And uh, technically, technically the biggest band I'm in for some reason. <laughs> I saw that on Spotify. You only have like six songs but you have a million listeners a month. Uh, half a million now, I think. I don't know if we've been at a million a month, but we have a lot more than my other bands, I guess. <laughs> how, uh, how? But it's like more more uh, regular music, I guess, yeah, compared to the oh, other you bands. Think it, you think it's more like available or like yeah. a, a little bit more easy listening? Maybe? I think I think so. I mean, okay. I think the the, the rand, random metal guy can listen to Throne, but I, but I don't think the random metal guy can listen to the other bands just as easy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Might be something like that. I don't know. Maybe. Well, it's super nice to have you here. And you live in the city, so, you know, it, this was just bound to happen. We met a couple of times at shows, and I'm in a store and shit like that. And, you yeah. know, I, I've been following your stuff, obviously, and uh, with Humanity's Last Breath throughout the years. And I don't remember names of albums, but I remember back in, like, 2013, mm -hmm. you released an album that kind of just crushed <laughs> everything production-wise. <laughs> Back in the Thank day, you, man. <laughs> and everyone, I remember me and Jukke Skog, who's doing a lot of my stuff, we were like, what the fuck is this? You know, and uh, you're known for, you know, you're a drummer, you're a guitar player, producer, mixer, engineer, and you're just like the perfect modern artist, in my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, isn't this really what it is, though? Like, everyone that's doing a lot these days that is modern, they, they do everything themselves right, right. a little bit. I mean, you have to be uh, kind of uh, one step ahead if you if you want to do the the amount of music that I'm doing. Uh, like, but it's also you have to have the ability, of course. But at the same time, being able to do everything kind of makes it so you never have to stop or, or you never have to wait on somebody else. Exactly. And that's kind of just like my experience with having a band and having bands mm -hmm. and having to deal with a lot of members uh, that might not put in the same amount of time as you do and then it kind of my will is my will to do the music is still there but their like enthusiasm might not be what my enthusiasm is so you kind of just have to do it yourself basically the story of my life yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's exactly what cool. i think that's so cool i mean what what are your like musical influences and wh where do where do your uh like first for metal and uh, your style. Well, tell me uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, a huge thing for me uh, was like Kiss. Like oh, okay. in the early days when I was uh, like, when I was a toddler, basically, we watched Sikta Mutuan on Aim for the Stars or whatever it's called. Okay. You know, it's like a TV program where kids sing their favorite songs yes. and they get to dress up and stuff. And I saw Love It Loud uh, by Kiss and I was mind blown because like, that song has like a huge drum intro yeah. like and that kind of blew my mind so i spent like all of my money on kiss records from that point on okay i bought like i think i have like 20 plus cds okay. of kiss they have a lot of cds uh and there was a guy at my local mall who was like selling off his kiss collection so he had okay. he had it all like prodded up in the back you can and I just went there each month when I got my allowance and just like that one and that one and that one I just picked picked them out and just listened to them 24/7 and kind of started learning the the stuff on drums because my father is a drummer also an engineer and uh, he he let me have drums in my room from like early age maybe when I was nine or something okay so I got to have drums in my room and we had instruments at home like piano and guitar and stuff so i kind of just gravitated towards everything <laughs> I, I suppose not not piano i'm not good at piano whatsoever but the 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 instruments that was being used in the music i was listening to but then uh, also i got like into heavier stuff via my dad's colleague who plays guitar in uh, dark game uh, uh. the band uh, like a technical Thrash band from from Helsingborg, Sweden. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like Meshuga plus Slayer plus yeah. something else. Uh, so that was like very mind blowing, and that that led me to getting all of these really cool metal records at a super early age, like 10, 9, 10, 11 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I got to hear 
all types of bands and I kind of picked the ones I really like. And like the, the bands that were huge for me was like Slipknot, Morbid Angel. Yep. And uh, like mostly like Morbid Angel was like the number one for me the longest time, I, I would say. And then I, I got to see like Meshuggah when I was 13. Okay. <laughs> like 2004 or whatever. Uh, I got to go with Peter from Dark Game. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was super formative for me and kind of super early on I got into pretty like heavy stuff, I yeah. guess, yeah. And got, got used to screaming vocals and stuff. I, I didn't really like it at first, but I was so fascinated by the music, I, I just kept on listening and, right. and you get used to it, you know. Awesome. So did, uh, like, when you were growing up like this, did you also record yourself? Like, how did the whole production thing start? My, my father is an engineer yeah. uh, and he had, we had an M-Box at home. Uh, did I think, you design? Yeah, yeah. The, the first, like, yeah, yeah. The f before Avid, I guess? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, the first, like, this sh really shitty, like, a tower stood up. That's like a the tower. M-Box, too. I had yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so we had that one. And I think that, the thing, I think Dad brought that home so he could work at home, mm -hmm. I think. I, I'm not sure, though. Maybe he brought it home from, from me, I don't know. Uh, but I think it was because back then, Pro Tools were locked right. to hardware. But there was a key to this, and you bought these the smaller interfaces, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can use it. Right, right. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, I don't... I think I had Pro Tools though mm -hmm. uh, at home. I think I started on something. It wasn't GarageBand, but it was like a Mac thing. That okay. was called, called like Sound something. I don't know. Okay. It was like a super basic pro okay. program. And I started there and uh, re recorded demos. And I, and I learned actually how to program drums in my school because I went to a, a music uh, high school, is okay. it? Gymnasium. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they taught us how to program drums in uh, uh, Reason. Uh, yes. So, so I programmed in Reason, bounced, bounced that audio out and got home and recorded guitars with my Pod 2.0. Mm. That's like kind of how it started. And then I wanted to start recording my own bands and stuff like that. And then it, it just yeah went on from there basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which, uh, which album is your like, you know, first Real album. I guess the self-titled HLB one. Yes. And that's yeah. the, the, still the one that people seem to be very like gravitated towards yeah. compared to the other HLB stuff. I I mean, it's a different thing from what I want to do with HLB now, mm -hmm. but I can definitely see how why people like it. It's more, it's less like uh, experimental than mm -hmm. HLB is. But I mean, I can see why people like it. I'm very tired of it personally. <laughs> So, you know, you, I get a little, a little bit butthurt when everyone is like, oh, the self-titled album is still the best one. Well, it's that's like, just how people are, it. you know. <laughs> you know how yeah, it is. it's what it is. But yeah, yeah I'm, I was very happy with that one, of course. Uh, and it's so funny because it was like, that was like the period of my life where I heard Viljarda mm -hmm. the first time yeah. and I wasn't in the band. Mm -hmm. I was just like, this is the best music I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. I want to make this music. If I can't be in, in Viljarda, I'll just make that sort of music but myself, so yes. that's what I did. So I kind of just ripped them off, I guess. But <laughs> well, you know, when, when uh, because it's funny when I heard uh, Humanity's Last Breath, the talk of the town was Vildiarta at that time. Hmm. Like everyone was like, "Fuck it," you know, yeah. Vildiarta and all that. But I was like, you know, Humanity's Last Breath. It's kind of you know, it's a little easier to listen to. The production is freaking amazing, and uh, you know, with, with Vildiarta back then, it was real. Like you can hear that it was a pod. And like really, you know, that yeah. kind of locked in tone while Humanity's Last Breath was a little bit more open, more. And from what I, you know, which I think is your style, just completely fucking smashed Thank to you pieces, so much. <laughs> you know, and it, that's kind of what I like with the production. I also listen to, uh, you know, all the other Humanity's Last Breath albums as well. It's the, the, it seems and also from watching your Nail the Mix and your uh, URM stuff is that you know, I come from a pretty half traditional way of mixing things. You know, yeah. I mixed on, on consoles and shit Ooh. like that. And, you know, I, I even like cut tapes oh, shit. at some point, I you know, know, cut that. the tape and, you know, made a, yeah, insane. Uh, but, you know, you have a very, from what I see, a very non-traditional way of doing things in the way that, you know, I saw you like working EQs, like you don't give a shit, you go everywhere, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, I right. like this because this is, sometimes, you know, this traditional way of doing things just needs to be thrown out the window. Maybe, and, maybe. And uh, that's just, um, I think it was nailed the mix that you were like, you were going plus five on EQ, you know, that's like a big no-no for, yeah, for yeah. guys like me, you know, but you made it 
and you made it sound really cool and kick ass. And uh, like I said, like the smashed type of really smashed, like, yeah. really <laughs> smashed. And like that, that's 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 not completely okay, but it really works. Yeah. You basically created a new genre of sound, in my opinion. I, I I'm like personally, I'm pretty i mean i still listen to stuff like that but i'm pretty as far as like sound goes i'm pretty tired of the band sound yeah like a drum kit that sounds like a drum kit yes. with, with the guitar that sounds like a guitar uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, the, the standard i mean it can sound good and all that and people love it but what i want to do with with my stuff is basically uh, try to have the drums be as fat as like a edm yes song or yes. whatever but make it work in the metal context mm. and making the guitars be i mean my guitars are in the bass range let's be let's be honest they're mm. they're like basses i guess yeah but uh so m using that range of frequencies and making that work with the huge drums is not is not very easy but yeah. i kind of want the very like maximalist type sound yeah because that's what i want to hear i want to hear all of my favorites, favorite riffs with that type of sound right. to make that. But like, uh, as you said about the pod tone with, with Diljarda and, and HLB, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I watched your Axe FX standard uh, where you uh, try them out, like one of your first okay. videos you put up <laughs> and you stand, you're, you're just standing next to a cab where you hooked up your Axe FX. I think you were in Scarpoint oh, okay, uh, yeah. back then. And you were playing like, God damn, I want that sound. I was yeah. like that. So that's why like I, I got the axe effects and stuff. So without you, it wouldn't sound that way. So thank that's you. Cool. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. But pod rules. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned earlier that you're still using pod farm. Yeah, I mean, it is po the Viljarda has been using basically the same tone for, I don't know, since 2006. I don't know when, when the pod came out, but yeah. yeah. A long time and it's kind of based around this amp called Big Bottom mm. and if you use that uh, uh, you're basically fine so I, I use like other cab impulses and other pedals and mm -hmm. stuff like that and, and I, I uh, experiment that way but uh, uh, that's the amp like that that has that fall sound and I've, I've been I mean we've been using it for so long and I've been using it for HLB as well. It's like no turning back now. It's like <laughs> that's the sound for for us at least right. for, for that type of sound. Have, have you tried to venture outside this world and uh, you know see what happens? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I've been. I mean, I think all of the HLB records have different stuff, different amps. Okay. But now, like since this album and, and uh, recently, I've just been committing to the pod even more. It's it's fun because I feel like. Uh, Everyone is always wanting the latest and greatest gear or latest yep. whatever it might be. But I, I'm, I just, I feel it's, it's nice and it's cool to just st stick with something that works mm. and something that's yours basically, yes. or theirs that yeah. I took. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, uh, so yeah, so I'm super stoked about that. I, I love, love Pod Farm and, and the pod, yeah. Mm. Awesome. Can, uh, can we backtrack a little bit about you were talking about very low tuned guitar? Yeah. Uh, how are you working the bass? Is that in the same octave or? It kind of depends uh, on the note. The thing is, the way I write music is not sitting down and playing a riff. Okay. Basically, the the way I write music is is um, more sound design. Yes. Basically, mm -hmm. it's, especially now, it's basically sound design. So I pitch around and copy and paste and you know I build I build yes. the riff in the DAW mm -hmm. so which means that uh, tuning is is not a is not a thing basically mm -hmm. is, is, is because I can uh, I can pitch so so much in a riff that the tuning is is not what it was when I recorded it yeah. and so like the actually playing the riff that's like an afterthought or like okay. something I have to do live later mm -hmm. and sometimes that's like super hard because it's like how am I supposed to do this yeah. like the other day I made a harmonic riff where the I made I took a harmonic on the fret I fretted a, a harmonic and that produced like four different notes yeah. and I went into Melodyne and I like and I moved the yeah. separate notes to make a chord right. and used that okay. and that's like literally impossible to do live <laughs> so it's like or are you I gonna solve that then? I don't know. Probably, I'm just <laughs> probably gonna play the chord. I guess. Yeah, I don't okay. know. I, yeah. I don't know actually. So, uh, <laughs> but it's like it doesn't matter because yeah. to me, 
that the the riff or the the song is like the most important thing and if we can't kind of do the exact same thing live that that's fine like yeah. to me so how do you uh, how do you pitch the what do you use to pitch the different like riffs and sections and all that do you use a i have i, I think i use three different pitch four different pitches like okay. that is it kind of uh, depends there's a way uh, of pitching that's super clean mm -hmm. uh, that I do in Pro Tools, which basically stretches the file okay. out, yep. which makes it so that there's no or like bar barely any artifacts yes. whatsoever. Exactly. But that's very clean sounding. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like one sound. If I want to sit down and play more, I use the the, the whammy DT pedal okay. yep. and pitch with that uh, and kind of so, so that way I can play through the pitch, yes. at, which I can't do if I do the stretch. Thing. Okay, so you do that in before recording, like yeah. Okay, so you have a physical pedal, that right? You pitch with okay, and I also have the old whammy for pitching up yes. because yep. pitching up with the old whammy sounds way better than the DT. Mm. The DT is super clean. The old whammy is super dirty, yeah. so you know I, I sit with my whammy <laughs> pedals like a like a double pedal basically, and try to come up with stuff. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of pitching going about the bass. By the way, uh, your original qu question, like the point where my bass is the same octave, octave, yeah. I would say is B, mm -hmm. because and and I'm I'm saying low low B yes. on the guitar, Yes. that's when I go to regular low B on like the bass. Like an octave below a seven string B, basically. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I'm playing octave below regular seven string C, mm -hmm. then I go the octave below on the bass because that's... Okay. I mean, but it's like barely, like, you don't hear the notes. But yeah. it's like, <laughs> the bass can actually produce it though. So yes. it's like, I, I do it that way. Uh, I like the sound. Um, so that's kind of where I draw the line. I've done some low B stuff, but it's like, it just sounds... Yeah, but and is it, it's almost impossible to hear the pitch. You right. Know? Like, is it in pitch? Oh, you tune it a little bit. It, oh, it still sounds in pitch. And it's like, it's really tough to hear. You know, 2023, notes are overrated. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really interesting to hear because you're basically, you're, you're, you're making a soundscape other than, you know, you know, that's a traditional what I'm doing with riffs and, you know, you have a bass and all that. You're making, it's electronical music in right. a way. But... Uh, it's more like, kind of like dubstep, but yes. it's kind of like that. It's yeah. like, I'm trying to make a different, a bunch of different sounds and weird stuff. Uh, but kind of try and transition from like regular riffs to that, you know. So. Can I ask you then, have you uh, mixed anything that's standard E in a while? If I mixed anything the standard E, oof. I, I wouldn't know. I, I don't think I uh, notice tuning that much, but I don't think so. I think it's Everything generally counts. like maybe like the highest stuff I mix is maybe C. Yeah, okay. From the bands. The, yeah. the bands that send stuff to me is usually lower. Yes. Okay. Or it gets lower, I, I guess. So you haven't had like a rock band come in like, hey, let's. Can you mix our stuff? And I mean, I would love to. I, I like. Uh, I, I like. D taking different approaches is yep. always like uh, I mean I, I don't make every band I mix sound like HLB mm -hmm. you know yep. uh, so so that's not like my job but I do like when there's like clear guidelines yep. like this should be this and mm -hmm. and that's always cool because the, the, then it, there's like super clear references mm -hmm. and I just want to make it sound way better than the references mm -hmm. and then I'm happy basically yeah so that I would be down to to mix a rock for sure. <laughs> I think it's That's cool. cool. So this this year you released a HLB album, and uh, there's also a Vildjet album coming this year, or is no, it not an album. I don't know. Uh, or did we, you think we're do, just doing kind of one song at a time? Okay. Uh, yeah, Pila Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're kind of just doing one song at a time uh, because uh, I mean the singer has four kids. <laughs> so okay. It's like it's a quite of a challenge to record everything and okay. get everything together. So it, we're just kind of finishing one song at a time and okay. kind of releasing step it. At, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we do with that. Um, and yeah, Throne. We're, we're working on. Uh, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> well, I you, mean, you, we're working on music with Throne, and we okay. have a bunch of songs, basically, yeah. and we're releasing one tomorrow. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that's probably uh, you. You probably can listen to yeah, it. Yeah, probably. When yeah. this has been released, check out "On the Verge" with Throne on YouTube. Then, yeah, yeah. it's sick. That's the latest one. Uh, so yeah, and um, working on what can I even say? <laughs> I, I don't know if I can say everything. 
Um, but yeah, I'm working on new HLB stuff always. Yeah, I always think that's. Is fun. that your, like that's your? Yeah, your mainstay is HLB for sure. Mm -hmm. There's like no no like rules or no mm -hmm. no uh, band member that's gonna tell me no. <laughs> that's good. I yeah. like that. <laughs> that's the way. Like, that's why you can do it so fast too. Probably. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there's no boundaries. Yeah. And you set the boundaries. I mean, mm. it's. It's the way of the modern musician, I guess. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I was thinking about, like, how is your... Because you write so much music, mm. right? How how do you go about your day? Do you sit like, okay, Monday morning, coffee, sit? I do, what's I, your work routine? I, I see, like, recently, I've, I seem to have, like, a unlimited inspiration going. I don't know. Oh, I can awesome. always I can always make something happen, basically. Okay. So it's basically just me choosing when to do it. Um, but uh, some do you start with drums or both? Uh, I s right now when I let's say I write HLB, uh, that's so like ambience based or like uh, sound design based. Mm -hmm. So now I actually um, uh, that's like the hardest part for me and always takes the longest. So I, and I, and I I don't feel that I'm that good at it. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, I contacted a DJ uh, called Inhuman, okay. and he has been making sound packs for me. So I, I just kind of give him the general direction of what I want to do. And I have a bunch of like uh, references for him that okay. are like, I want this type of synth, blah, blah. So he just gives me a, little, a huge sound pack, and I just go through and pitch and combine, blah, 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 okay. and then start that way. And so, you asked if I start with drums, so I usually create whatever whatever layer I'm going to put the riff on mm -hmm. first and then I kind of riff over that for 10 minutes, yeah. just sit and riff right. and then I just kind of start taking parts from what I did okay. and pitching and combining and chopping and blah 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 and then it becomes some sort of a riff and then I maybe track that properly Okay. and usually when I, when I uh, chop up and pitch these riffs, I usually have like a crash and a snare going, maybe like Shh, All right, yeah. Shh. So I have some like tempo or yes. or something like that. Yeah, so that's basically not how I do it now. But it's like I, I always do stuff differently. Like the self-title album is all written in uh, Guitar Pro. Oh, OK. Yeah, because I was I couldn't make the riffs as technical as, as I wanted them okay. to be. OK, so I had to make them make them in Guitar Pro. Instead. OK, yeah because I didn't have the skill back then. But now it's a way different uh, approach. It's more like, yeah, like I said before, it's more more sound design than riffs, right. I, I would say. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in, at least yes. right now. Yeah. But do you, uh, in Humanity's Last Breath, your guitar, mm -hmm. playing guitar? Live, yeah. Live, and uh, in Vildiarta, you're doing drums or? Live, live? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and in Throne, it's also drums. Yeah, okay. live, yeah. Okay. So, but on record, it's like. You do everything uh, except singing. At uh, Vildjard, I, I don't do, I do like bass, drums, okay. and Production. I produce the vocals with the singer, okay. and thrown. Uh, some songs are Johan's songs, okay. but most of them are um, are my songs. Uh, what? Oh yeah, and HLB is all me, yeah. Yes. Or this DJ guy now as well. Yeah. But the last record with HLB also involved Kalle uh, from, yes. from Viljarda. So okay. it's all like incest. <laughs> everyone's just, everyone's just uh, involved with everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, I like to give uh, like a, not a comparison, but draw parallels to, you know, you have like gent bands. They kind of also, you know, are a little bit incest yeah. in a way. And, you know, you have your thing as well. And uh, that's just, you know, you, you want to work with people that you like and that yeah. you know you can work with. Right. Why not just sleep, uh, you know, with your cousin? Or, you know, <laughs> just um, say. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. But it's like, yeah, you, you don't have to be so precious about the identity of your band or no. whatever. Like this, this band is these members with this sound. You don't have to be anything like that. You can yeah. be whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. But I'm not going to make a pop record with HLB, though. No, oh, okay. No. All right. Well, <laughs> give it a couple of years, maybe. <laughs> maybe. So, uh, speaking about guitar, you have, you brought a guitar. Yes. And uh, A fully normal guitar. Yes. That looks but you know like... what? It's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we need to talk about this situation right here with uh, how you play guitar. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, well, I, I see... Uh, I, it, it's actually not the first time I've seen a left-handed player play... Bloodbath, right? 
No, that's like, uh, you know what? It might actually be my third time watching oh. it. So, because there was one guy during the 90s when I grew up that yeah. played like this okay. uh, locally. And uh, so basically what you're having right here is that you're, you're left-handed. Yes. And you have a left-handed guitar, but your strings are reversed. Yes. Okay. So show us how you would sit with this guitar so people understand. Yeah. So, so I have, have the thick, thick string at the bottom, yeah. Um, God, it's dirty. Uh, sorry about that. But um, yeah, this is straight from Tor. So okay. Um, yeah, uh, I learned to play on a right-handed guitar yes. because all of my my uh, relatives and like my family is uh, right-handed. Yes. So we had like a steel string acoustic at home, yep. which was a right-handed one. Yep. I think I started like this maybe. Yeah. And then it became that that, and I never really felt hindered by. By this, like uh, I always thought it was smart. This, the smarter this way is of like doing it. this is like the hindrance I have. Okay, I, I tune so low, so my strings are loose and they get caught under the pi yep. pickup because they're at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, 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 I hear yeah. you. So that basically is the problem. Uh, and yeah, me. I always thought that was. I mean, that was the most logical way of, of a left-handed playing playing guitar, which is to take a right-handed guitar and shift it. Because I didn't see people playing a left-handed guitar. I saw this guy mm. during the 90s. He played like you. And it's yeah. like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He has all the guitars on the world. You know, you yeah. don't have to mod or do anything like that. It's like, yeah. it's, it makes sense. And I'm not up here fucking... <laughs> You're not shredding up there. Ing -ving. I'm, not, I'm not doing solos or anything yeah. like that, basically. Do you feel... Because are you... Okay, good question I have right now. So are you doing strictly upstrokes then? No, I'm doing downstrokes. <laughs> You're downstroke, but effectively, it's an upstroke if you would do it, and it exactly, yeah. So, but the thing is, it. The th I I was like way back. I was like, no, it doesn't make any s difference in the sound yeah. or whatever. But it does. Though. It does. It does. Uh, I I realized this um, because uh, when I f when I chug, mm -hmm. the last note uh, that I'm hitting is the thick string. So exactly. that would be the dominant. Exactly. One. So I get more like a run, run, yeah, exactly. Kind of when I mm -hmm. chug, and the other way around is more percussive and more like duh, duh, yep. Duh. Yep. and mine is more like rr, rr. Yep. It's hard to. I think Devin Townsend has like a technique where he does that with the pick somehow. He's kind of, I think he's angling it. Yeah, so he's just like, like yeah. this. Yeah. So he gets some sort of like rr mm -hmm. type uh, sound. But yeah, yeah, um, it's a sound. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sound. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I don't know if there are any anything. This is Hapas guitars, by the way. Yes, uh, I'm sponsored by these guys. I love these guys. Uh, these guitars rule, and you, you need, got some. You need one. Yeah, you got. Is that an M6 right there? Yeah, Lundgren M M6 mm -hmm. and Evertune. Evertune with a bunch of rust. Uh, yeah, and 28 inch scale for low tuning. Mm -hmm. I also had to do this mod. Because uh, of the of the neck dive, my uh, my scale length uh, gives me so uh, this kind of effectively makes the horn longer. Mm -hmm. So the strap strap makes it more balanced. I guess really helped with that. Um, but the thing is, we have an identical one uh, that's right-handed for the other guitars yep. in HLB, and that what that one doesn't have neck dive at all. That, so that's just like... different slabs of wood. <laughs> yeah. can, can be a different weight. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. I guess this is. Uh, lighter than I suppose yes. and heavier neck. I don't know. Yes. I mean maple is like it if it's maple I guess it's roasted maple, right? It looks like uh, you know that better than, the, than me I uh, don't know. It looks like a reinforced neck. At yeah, least. yeah uh, So that's usually denser and heavier and then you might have like this a swamp ash for instance for sure Yeah, uh, which might be a little bit lighter. So uh, it's pretty heavy like I think it's pretty heavy It was pr it's probably the neck. I yeah, you, okay, you can okay. feel it's a it's a dense neck. Yeah, and uh, but yeah I mean, the Evertune will you also. Can, you can play on this, right? So I play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you can just give your guitar yeah. to anyone. It's, yeah, it's dude. Exactly. Awesome. Fuck yeah. Maybe I gotta record some riffs. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Later. Just hear it. But then the, the input is like. Yeah, but you, if you have like uh, one of those ones. Oh, the be, angle ones. Yeah, 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 it'll mm -hmm. be fine. I hear you. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, this is tuned to what? This is E. Let's see if so I can remember. E or? Yeah. So E. A, E, yeah, yeah. A, yeah. Uh, or is it A? E, B, E, something. Yeah, A, A flat, A. Oh, okay. So we have this thing, like. Okay, yeah. So we don't have to do, the, usually yeah, you have to do this to have the dissonant yes. stuff. But since we have a lot of riffs with uh, dissonant noises and whatever, yeah. we just decided to make them 
so we don't have to fret like that. Smart. So we can do more intense stuff with that to uh, yeah, just to make so it easy. work. Yeah. yeah. And you can do like cool chords with that stuff like that that you can't do with other tunings, yeah. I suppose. So yeah. Very cool. So yeah, that's like the bass tuning. Everyone is always asking like what's the tuning? Yeah. And they say and I say the tuning and they're like, "But you you're playing lower." But yeah, that's pitch. So yes. If it's not, if it's lower than E, mm -hmm. that's pitch, a hundred percent of the time. So uh, when you're playing live with this and changing pitch, yeah. what are you using then? Are you still using the DT or? Yeah, okay. uh, MIDI control DT. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise we cannot play the songs basically yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Because we change like the pitch multiple times per riff sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Which means like without the pitch, it's just gonna sound like <laughs> I don't know what. You, you know, so uh, eight strings not a thing. No, I, I never felt that I wanted more strings. Um, Since you're not really shredding either. Yeah, like. and also like for me, if I'm if I'm chugging away here, yeah. if I have two more strings yeah. here, they're gonna ring. Yeah. Because I, I need to yes. d dampen those somehow, you know? Okay. And, and since I'm coming from the bottom, yeah. you, you're coming from the bottom yes. and you can d dampen yeah, I can these. Yeah. I can't. So I have to do, maybe I can do this though, but eight strings it like yeah <laughs> I, I never felt that do, i needed do you, them do you feel that you regretted the decision that you learn it this way sometimes no i mean i, I no i feel like i'm uh, a little bit because the muting part is, is yeah like losing that is, it's a very big thing yeah obviously. but i have my ways i think it's like your palm if, if yeah. i'm chugging like yeah. this yeah. i can put my entire palm yeah so that's kind of thing also this mm -hmm. uh, so I, I haven't had any issues with that, like I, but I probably would if I had more strings. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, no, I, I'm not. Um, I'm not regretting it. Like the, I can feel a bit of shame sometimes, like turning up, tr turning up at gigs and like, uh, <laughs> like turning my amp on and putting my guitar on, and the people are like, "What is, is that?" Like they're like, is th "What is this guy what is, doing?" What is like, this who, problem? Yeah, it's like <laughs> b because most people's like uh, reaction if they don't know anything or haven't heard anything mm -hmm. is like negative. It's like, of course, this guy think he's like people think I did this. Like this is my choice. Yeah, it, well, it's like my choice somehow. But I started too early to have any control over it now. Yeah. Like it's too early, so I'm not going to change it. Yeah, uh, but it's it's not like I woke up one day. It's like I'm going to I'm going to be the special upside yeah, down yeah, you're guy. Yeah, right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Do you know if there's any pitch uh, plugins that are good enough for a live situation that doesn't add too much uh, latency or? I think the best options are probably like the Gojira one, okay, uh, yeah. or the Petrucci one. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure uh, how much latency they add. They might add some. So when you use Podfarm, is it in the DAW you add it? Reaper. In Reaper. So you have like an auxiliary input that's automated and. Uh, so I have a MIDI track going out to the pedals, okay. which I'm hooked up to. Okay. Going so guitar, whammy, yes. interface. Yes. So and the inter oh and the whammy is controlled uh, via MIDI. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And like to counter some of the like latency, you can move the MIDI automations like a little bit back. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So some, but like playing through a whammy pedal has latency. Has a lot of latency actually. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just used to it because I've I've been playing through that right. for years. Yeah. So and I've been playing through the DAW in general for years. Yes. So it's like I have fully mixed sessions where I sit and record, mm -hmm. which is a ton of latency. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm used to all that. Okay. Um, but it's not going to be like an amp response. No, 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 no. Direct response. Yeah. No. I mean, it's because why I'm asking is because I'm experimenting with this myself when mm -hmm. I'm going out for, you know, not with the Haunted, but when I go play my own music, yeah. you know, I have eight string songs mm. that I, I don't want to bring an eight string if mm. I only have one song. So I tune down like five steps for on a seven string. And uh, as of right now, I'm doing it in the DAW mm. and it's okay. But, um, and like you said, also in between songs because the yeah. solo might be, you know, higher up. So it goes back and forth and back right. and forth. And uh, it's just, I'm just trying to find a really good pitch shifter. Mm. I have the, you know, Digitech drop mm. and all that, and it works, but it's another pedal to put on your pedal board. And, you know, I need to have a smaller rig. And I still I, think that's the best, best it is solution probably, right now. Yes. There I might guess. be better ones coming, I don't know. 
pitching is hard, I think. I think it's very complex. Yes. Uh, and I've tried a bunch of different pitches. Um, but it's like, I kind of like, I kind of learned to like the artifacts or like the, the okay. dirtiness yes. of like, a, if you, <laughs> if, if I'm tuned to like drop E mm -hmm. and then I uh, use the whammy DT and pitch down like seven steps. Yep. And, that, <laughs> and I love that dirty, yeah. dirty tone. But the thing is, uh, when 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 you when you need cleaner tones or like more uh, less sludgy tones, mm -hmm. it can be hard for sure. Uh, but I really like the all the low end and all the yeah. It just sounds like. Is there any instance where you tune up or pitch up? Yeah, um, not often. But it's like I obviously I pitch up a lot with like the screamy yeah yeah ring. well you whammy it yeah 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 okay yeah yeah so that would be but, but not in a song like you're riffing in a i two, mean we have one song that we play live called withering that's in yeah. f okay so we pitch up a half step okay for most of that one uh but it's also like when you sit with with the midi it's like you can you can kind of decide how you want to play the song yeah uh, because you can effectively pitch your way through the entire song. You can just sit and yeah, play just a like, zero. Just like, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> automate the pitch. Yeah. Right. So you kind of, but I just want to pitch as little as possible, basically. Yeah. Uh, but I, at the same time, I don't want to jump from 24 to one, like yeah. that. Yeah. Then I would rather make that a zero right. and fret 23. So okay. that do instead so, of that do. <laughs> okay. So you do even like you pitch at notes. Even. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Shit. Just single notes. Yeah, for sure. So like you can have a single note, the next note is not pitched yeah, and yeah. back and back. That's Damn. constant, like constant. Holy shit. Our, our pitch automation looks like and that. You, and you also put it a little bit earlier because there's a latency in yeah. the switch. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that must suck ass to program. <laughs> but it's quite fun because effectively for me, that's the first time I get to play the song. Yes. So that's very excited. Holy like shit. having to, you play one thing and you yeah. hear another basically. Mm -hmm. It's quite exciting. Do you record yourself, like when you write the song, do you record yourself playing the song? Like in a, just to remember, like how did I play this? No. Okay. I, so have, that to makes it even... I have to suffer later. All right. <laughs> because that's something I've, I've started to do a couple of yeah? years back. Just as soon as the song is done, film myself playing it. Because oh. then you're not going to touch it for several years yeah. until it's time to play it live again. So uh, for me, it kind of doesn't matter exactly how I fretted stuff. Yeah. I can be in the ballpark. I can hear if I'm on like the right. thick string here yep. or here yep. or here, even if it's the same note. Yes. Because we already we already pay so much attention to timbre mm -hmm. when we make riffs as far as like I there's like the classic thing with like Viljarda and HLB is like let's say we play a lot of stuff up here like super high up on the thick string, it has a special sound. Yep. It's like more low end. Mm -hmm. But then you see the covers and they are like they want to fret down here because yep. that's what guitarists do because yes. it's it's more comfortable whatever but it sound it doesn't sound anything no, like it. It does not. So we already pay so much attention to the different timbres on the guitar. Uh, so so like I, I don't really have a huge like problem remembering. We actually made tabs with this guy uh, Joa from Portugal. You've probably seen him, seen him on YouTube. He's mm -hmm. like a huge uh, guitar god type dude. Okay. Um, he helped me because he's really good at uh, Guitar Pro. He yeah. helped me um, uh, tabbing out all of the new songs on the album. He's gonna tab out all of our old songs as well. Okay. And he's super good, but uh, yeah, we went through all of it. And yeah, it's a lot, like it's so much yes. stuff like that. Yep. The pitch and pff, yeah. How, so how are the tabs then? Like. Can, Dude, can, there's can like a PDF. Even, there's someone... a huge PDF <laughs> that you have to read before you get into the oh tabs because God. the tabs are not going to sound correct. No, exactly. That's They're going mean. to be, you're going to play it correct, but yes. it's not going to sound correct. So okay. all of them have like per note, like minus four plus, oh, I don't know. Shit. Yeah, yeah. All of, yeah. It's so much. Well, if someone really wants to play the songs, they can. Yeah, they have the that. MIDI file as well. Oh, sh oh okay. For the so whammy. Yeah. Smart. But <laughs> I, I, I don't know if anyone has actually done it though. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You're kind of limiting a lot of people. Yeah. A little bit. But I mean, it is. I mean, if you want to play the song, I, That's you, you have it. the. Yeah. You have. You can do it. That's cool. I want to see it. I want to see someone <laughs> do it.
Absolutely. Have you, are there many like uh, you know covers online? Yeah, I mean, there's kids? a fair fair amount. Yeah, okay. yeah, but none of the, none of them are correct. <laughs> 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 but it's I mean I'm flattered that people take the time to learn the rhythms yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it would be cool if someone actually looked at the tabs and 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 did it 100. percent Right. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> so I, I, of course Zhao would. He did it. He made, okay. he made a cover okay. after he made the task with me. So his, his is 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So what type of like, uh, do you have like favorite impulse responses that you use or? Dude, uh, this latest tone I'm, I did for the latest HLB, it doesn't have an impulse. Oh, okay. I removed it's just the EQ cab. Or? Yeah, I removed the cab and I put another distortion after it. So it's like, <laughs> it's like distorted amp and then Saturn after okay. which is like tape saturation yes. so it's like even more sat saturated and then i eq'd some high end off but yeah. you get like a super flat mid-range and low end which i really like if you turn off the cab why not so that's what i did but like my favorite <laughs> uh, my favorite impulse responses are of course my own yeah. and uh and also like uh, the ggd ones i really love okay, yep. yeah they have a bunch of uh, cool Cool. And you do sell a bunch of stuff on your website, yeah, or like yeah. your studio web website. Yeah, and I'm also working on, I forgot that, I work, I'm working on my drum plugin right now. Okay. So that's what I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really, really stoked on that. That awesome. turned out great. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to be really, yeah, like, it's going to be cool. Is it the HLB style or is it? Yeah, it's going to be, I'm, I'm trying to make it, like there's going to be like an unmixed version and a mixed version. Yeah. So I'm trying to make the mixed version sound like the latest HLB. Yeah, okay. it's pretty close. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You know, for every album you release, you can, release a new pack for sure basically. for sure yeah yeah very smart yeah. what's your website uh odeholm uh what is it streck dash dash is it no the minus just say minus okay we're swedes sorry odeholm <laughs> minus audio.com <laughs> we awesome. sell samples and irs and all sorts of stuff dude thank you so much for being here this was, this was like, amazing thank you for having i think me, man. you're you're definitely like uh you're like you're the future guitar player in, in many ways. And, uh, you know, as a, you know, I do a little bit of producing myself and it's just, you know, we have so much in common, but I feel so old, <laughs> you know? So you're like the new blood <laughs> that kind of, you know, pushes things forward, uh, things forward. Thank you. And uh, I just so much respect for you and all your endeavors and uh, all your bands. Same and, to you, man. You've, you're huge, man. You're like the, the, the Swedish metal god, man. You're like the... That makes me sound old. Every, I don't want to be old. <laughs> I mean, it's it's positive though. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Buster, Odehom, thank you so much. Kaffee see ya.